So the Alliance is the statewide uh, association for community nonprofits. We have hundreds of members that um, belong to the Alliance for capacity building services, uh, cost saving benefits and advocacy and lobbying on behalf of uh, community organizations. So the project that we are here to talk about today would be an example of one of the capacity building um, benefits that we offer our members and nonprofits around the state. Uh, we've commissioned an independent study to survey nonprofit providers around the state on their wages and benefits to obtain data that will help you, we hope, align um, your values with uh, your wages and benefits and support fair and consistent compensation practices, as well as continue your work to advance equity and inclusion within your organizations. Um, from the survey, we hope to produce a comprehensive report, the only one of its kind in Connecticut to date, um, that will include positions that are common to the Connecticut workforce, but are usually difficult to find and make comparisons in other regional or national studies. And so this is going to be um, a Connecticut specific uh, wages and benefits report. And the, we hope that the report will have uh, benefits information from small and large nonprofits of uh, different kinds across the state in a wide range of service areas. And the goal is to get the report, um, the data analyzed and the port, report published um, early 2025. Um, but first, we really need your help. Um, the more nonprofit organizations that participate in the survey, the better, the more comprehensive and accurate our data will be. Um, so we ask that you support this project by taking the time to complete the survey. And today we'll take a little bit of time to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but before we move on to that, I did wanna say that we are really grateful to our community foundation partners for their support, the Connecticut Community Foundation, the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven, Northwest Connecticut Community Foundation, and the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Their contributions to this project have really made it possible for us to provide the report at no cost um, uh, for all of nonprofits across Connecticut. To help with uh, undertaking the survey, um, we have uh, created a worksheet to help you begin to gather the necessary information um, in order to really be prepared. Um, the survey can take half an hour to complete, um, but the data gathering process, it's what's uh, really going to take the longest. And so the worksheet is really important in helping you gather all of that information in one place before you do. Um, the survey. And we strongly encourage you to use it to identify and gather all the relevant information that you'll need. Um, before you uh, also do the survey, I would identify one person within your organization um, to take the survey. Um, usually there's multiple folks within an organization who may be interested in taking it, but if one person could complete it, it would really streamline the process. And we're gonna be verifying nonprofit organizations' um, identities by their EIN number. Um, so that's gonna be really important to have on hand. Um, so I put in the chat here a um, link to the worksheet if you haven't already seen it or received it. Um, and please use that. And um, there are already some uh, Q and A's in that worksheet that I'll go over now, some of the important ones that I think are relevant, and then we'll open it up to questions from folks in the audience. Um, so the survey, like I said before, we've commissioned with the UNH Survey Center and Tracy is on the call right now to take some um, questions and, and provide some answers to some of the technical aspects of the survey. Um, so by doing this, we are going to ensure that the survey remain, the survey data that you provide to us will remain confidential. Um, the Alliance will not be able to see who submitted what answer. Um, the Survey Center will be aggregating the information and providing it um, in the aggregate to, to folks. Um, so 
I, I sort of want to open it up to questions to see who just has general questions about um, the survey, how long it will take, um, if you have questions about operating expenses, converting um, salaries to hourly wages, uh, feel free to type in your questions in the chat and we'll sort of get to them one by one. Oh, um, Allison, have you seen the remarks in the chat? Have you been following the chat? Uh, the Q&A, no, I've been trying. There's a lot of people who are having trouble getting in. So I've been trying to help them. But, oh, okay. Um, it says that the chat is disabled. Oh, okay. Maybe we can just use the Q&A for now and I'll see if I can fix that. Okay. So why don't folks um, type in their questions in the Q&A? Okay, so Tracy, we have a question. Um, I'm hoping you can cover it. Um, what if our roles don't exactly fit your descriptions? Sure, so the point of the roles that we provide are um, pretty general so that they could go across different organizations and different job titles. Um, you would want to only respond to roles that um, closely match the description, um, not necessarily the title. Um, if you have a role that doesn't really match at all and doesn't really fit in there, then we're not actually collecting or um, data on that particular role um, in this survey. But there is a question at the end of the survey asking you about roles that you would like to see added in future surveys. And we, if we have enough um, interest in those particular roles, we can certainly add them the reason that we do this is so that we don't have such small numbers um, in each response um, so that if the numbers of respondents per role are too small, we can't really say anything about that data. Thanks, Tracy. Amanda has a question. She says, my organization is headquartered in Massachusetts but has a division in Connecticut. I just wanna confirm I'm understanding correctly that all of the general company info is to be based on the organization as a whole and the info on the specific roles is to be based on our Connecticut division only. Correct, I believe that is what is in the instructions. Yes, um, so if you have staff um, that, if you are based in multiple states, um, I would answer the survey um, on just your Connecticut offices and locations. Okay. Allison, um, is the chat working, do you know, or is there a way we can share the link um, with folks to the um, I don't know if we could put it in the Q and A, but it doesn't seem now that we've started the webinar. I don't think I can change the access to the chat. Okay. Um, but I am making it. I just did make it so that everyone can see what's in the Q and A. Okay. Before they could only see their own questions. Mm hmm. So. Um... We have a question that says, do we need to provide the data as of July 1st, 2023, and the data needed is only for full-time employees? Um, which question is this? Um, is this to me? Yes. Um, correct. So I would use, we're, we're using the most current fiscal year that you have. Um, so that's, that's the year that um, we're collecting data on and um, correct, we are using full-time employees. Is that right, Tracy? Um, we'll collect data on full-time and part-time employees um, as well. Um, if we are collecting um, wage data on roles, um, we will only be collecting that on part-time employees if the role itself specifies part-time. Um, but when you are talking about, say, your organization's um, budgeted salaries, that's not just for full time. That's your organization in Connecticut as a whole. Um, 
Thank you, Tracy. So, so somebody else has a question. If one person has multiple roles, how should I report it? For example, my assistant director also is the enrollment coordinator and family engagement coordinator. Um, so I think in that case, you would pick the description and requirements that best describe that position overall. Um, is that right, Tracy? Yeah, I would do that. Um, you wouldn't want to put them in as three separate individuals. Um, they're all getting paid. They're the this one person is getting paid um a singular wage. Um, and so you would pick the description that best um matches their um their role and then provide the wages for that. Tracy, um, I have a technical question for you um, sure. here. So somebody's inquiring, why are we um, calculating this hourly? So they are an executive director. Their position is technically a certain number of hours, but as the ED, they work well more than that. Um, and how will the survey take that into account? What if some have a 40 hour work week and some have 35 they technically have a 35 hour work week. So how are we comparing apples to apples? So I believe on the instruction sheet, um, regardless of your salaried person's number of hours, whether they're working 35 or 40, you'll be converting that annual wage into an hourly wage based on a 40 hours. And this is just so that we can compare um, apples to apples when we are combining and aggregating the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, folks are wondering when they'll get an actual link to the survey. So the survey will open, um, I think in next week or the week after, um, <laughs> I, I don't have it right in front of me, but after we were waiting to hold the information session and then we'll launch the survey after this session, we'll compile um, the questions and answers from today and add them to the Q&A that we've already shared with folks. Um, that's in That prefaces the worksheet. Um, and then following this webinar, we'll send out a link to the worksheet, the Q&A, and a link to the actual survey, which will remain open until December. Um, we have a question from Shana, we're a parent organization. Do we have to submit a report per subsidiary? They have their own EIN, or can we submit one report with all data across our subsidiary network? Hmm. I think I need to think about this for a minute. I don't think we've ever gotten this question before, unless Tracy, you've, you've dealt with this in the past. No, and I'm thinking the same thing. Like, I think it's something that we need to think through, but if they each have their own EIN and their own operating budget and own um, sort of organizational structure, it might mean towards providing their information separately. Um, I guess I just don't understand the structure of the organizations um, completely. Okay. Yeah, we'll think, I think that was submitted, submitted by Shana. So we'll think through that, Shana, and get back to you with an answer in the Q&A document that we'll be sharing at the webinar. Um, Don asks, if we have questions while doing the survey, who we, can we reach out to? Um, that would be Allison Tishy. She's on this call right now. Um, her email is atishy at ctnonprofitalliance.org. And she'll be able to either answer questions directly or um, we'll check in with Tracy if they are uh, technical related questions. Um, we have a follow-up question about the 40 hour work week. Um, so all data results will be given in a 40 hour work week. Is that correct, Tracy? Mm -hmm. They will be given in an hourly wage, um, regardless of the number of hours worked, unless the position itself was specified as a part-time position. When reporting income and expenses, are we using amounts budgeted for the fiscal year or actual income expenses for the, fis uh, for the fiscal year, the most recent fiscal year on record, is that right? 
it depends on where they are situated with their current fiscal year. So we understand that not all, all organizations share the same fiscal year. Um, so we will ask you to report on the most recent um, completed fiscal year if it um, matches as closely to the July 2023, June 2024. Actually, everybody will have completed that one. But if your fiscal year goes till, say, October, um, it would be that one, and you would have to provide estimated numbers because your fiscal year has not yet completed. Um, but we will be collecting what your actual fiscal year that you're reporting on is. So if your fiscal year has completed, it'll be completed numbers and actual numbers. If you're still in the fiscal year that encompasses that general time frame, then it would be estimated. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's some confusion in the chat around or in the Q&A around the breakdown. So Julie was saying that the instructions say convert to hours using full time 37.5, no. not 40. Use what the instructions say. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. I, I, um, yes. There's an equivalent for 40 hours, 37 and a half, 36 or 20. How should we reflect our wages if we support our office in Connecticut as well as several offices in both Pennsylvania and Delaware? Would we just list the hours associated with, associated with our Connecticut office and base the wages off of that? Meaning I'm a salaried position, but I spread my time through all of those offices. Hmm. I would think that you would want to use all of your time that you work in Connecticut, regardless if you're supporting other states um, with that position. Can you share the instructions that are being referenced? Yes, um, we have created a worksheet um, with Q&A that will add to the Q&A from today too. Um, we're just having some technical difficulties in opening up a chat um, I'm not sure if Allison's had any, have you made any progress on that? No. Allison, no, could you, could you put in the link to the document in an answer of somebody's Q and A? It gives you the option to type an answer. Could you type the answer be the link? Uh, I could try that. Oh, I think that then hides it from everybody else. Hmm. I just tried doing that. I, can I, can you see it? Yep. Which question did you answer? Okay, people are seeing oh. it. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. That's, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> All right. So the link that was just shared through one of the questions is a link to the worksheet. Um, you can print it out or type it out. We didn't convert it. We, If you need a Word document version, I have that. Just email us and we'll send you a Word document version so you could fill it out online. Um, or on your computer, if you'd like. Are there any other questions? All right. Um, there's a question from Patty about retirement benefits. Um, I believe there's an option to respond with not offering a match. Um, and if it does ask you what your match would be, then it would be 0% um, if you don't match at all. 
Um, and I think I, I'd have to get to the retirement questions. There may be an option to indicate that you do a percent contribution rather than match. Um, and if one of our options don't match your situation exactly, I believe there is an other um, where you can then describe what your person, what your organization situation would be. We don't provide retirement benefits, but employees can participate in the Connecticut Savings Program at a percentage of their own choosing. Do we have to provide data on these contributions? If they're your employees' contributions, but not your organization's contributions, then no, you would not be reporting on those. Um, Tony, um, if you have mainly volunteers, um, there is some questions up at the beginning of the survey that will ask you about the number of um, employees, paid employees that you have, both full-time and part-time. If all of those are entered as zero, um, you'll get some questions about your vol all-volunteer organization, and then the questions regarding wages and other things that don't... Um, um, apply to an all-volunteer organization um, will not be asked. So the survey will be much shorter for you. Tracy is asking, we have a co-leadership set up with two presidents. How do I report on both? Hmm. That I think would be impossible um, given the way the structure of the survey is set up. Um, I have to think about the best way for you to, I mean, you're going to have to make a decision on which one to provide more specific data, um, on the director position. Um, and I think that's just going to be a decision that you as an organization will need to decide on which one to, to provide that data on. Um, go ahead, Tracy. I was going to do, um, upon providing the information requested for the survey, will we receive a comparative report of some sort? I don't know what you mean by comparative report. Um, you will receive the aggregated report at the end, um, in early 2025, once all the data has been cleaned, compiled and analyzed, um, and produced into a report. Um, we do, upon request, we can provide you a copy of your responses um, so that you can keep them on file for the next time the survey is done in two years. If you want to look at what you did two years ago and then this time around, we can provide that as well. Um, Brunilda, yeah, can the survey be converted to a PDF writable document? We can convert. It, it's just many, many pages. It'd be like the way the survey yeah. gets, um, it, it's quite, it becomes many pages, um, but the yeah. worksheet and, has most of the questions. If yeah, not and there's, I, as I understand it, there's also some skip logic related to the survey. And so if we printed out the survey itself and gave it to you or converted it to a Word document, it sort of wouldn't make sense. Um, because if you were taking it, it would skip around depending on your answers. But um, like Tracy said, the worksheet that's provided, if you fill that out, you'll have the bulk of the information that you'll need to complete the survey once you get started. And once you do start the survey, I believe that you can complete it over time. Um, you don't have to sit all at once. So as long as you enter in that same information with your EIN number, um, you'll be able to go back and resume the survey. Is that right? You Tracy? will need to, you will, well, um, it's not necessarily the EIN. It will save your responses as long as you use the same browser um, and computer that you took it on before. If you switch computers, um, 
you will not be able to get that saved information um, from your cache, but you can reach out to us at the survey center and ask for us to produce a link for you to get that, um, get back into your survey if you need to do it on another device. Mm -hmm. Elendor is asking when the survey link is open, how do we submit the data, a file upload? Um, it, it's a active online survey. So you'll be entering the information that you've recorded on your worksheet into the online survey. And then at the end of the survey, there will be a submit button um, and you will um, submit your data. Um, there's been capacity. I don't know what you mean by stipends, I think if it's not a wage and it's a bonus, the survey would not be asking questions on that unless it is for the director. So someone's asking, is the link survey identical to the paper version? Um, like we mentioned, it's not exactly identical because the survey has, um, the online survey has some skip logic and other questions um, in there that it's going to ask you, but if you are able to pre-fill out the worksheet before you get ready to take the survey, it'll make the process go a lot faster. Um, and the link will be available following, um, I would say maybe in the next week or two, um, we're after this call, we are going to compile everybody's Q and A's and update the worksheet with the most recent questions and answers. And then um, we'll send it out along with the link to the survey, which will remain open until about early December. Um, Alicia, if you choose other for service sector, yes, there will be an option for you to describe your organization. Um, Stephen, to clarify, if our year end is December um, of 2024, would we use prior year December or estimate this year? I would estimate this year um, as that will be the fiscal year that is closest to the June to July um, fiscal year that we're looking at. Um, and for the fiscal year ending um, a couple weeks ago, 9.30, um, you would use um, 9.30.24 would be the end of the fiscal year that you're going to report on. Simon's question, I think, goes along with the other one that we need to, to think yeah. on. Yeah, that one's interesting too. We'll get back to you, Simon, after we think about that. I think we define fringe. Um, so anywhere where there is blue in the survey when you're on it online, you can hover over it for more of a... Um, definition. So your fringe benefit rate is the cost of employee benefits, excluding payroll taxes and workers' compensation divided by the total gross wages. So essentially it's going to be the percent of that your organization contributes to the employee that is not wages to their benefits. And those definitions are in the worksheet as well. So um, I provided a link to the final report and in, in an answer here. Um, somebody previously asked if you'll get information um, after you complete the survey. So for folks who don't have the survey that and report that we completed in 2022, um, check it out. It's really comprehensive. Um, it covers a wide range of positions, 
um, from a lot of different types of nonprofit organizations. But what we're hearing from nonprofits and alliance members is that they really need up-to-date information. A lot has changed since 2022, including inflation and all these other factors um, that would impact your wages and benefits that you're providing your staff. And so that's why we're looking to do an up-to-date report this year. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of questions coming in about the fiscal year. Um, because we we use the July um, 23 to June 2024 as a um, goalpost, um, we don't want you, if your fiscal year is a different than that, we don't want you to report on the July to June months. We want you to um, provide data on your fiscal year and the one that cl most closely matches the year and month that we're providing. Um, we could, um, if, if it helps to think about it, um, use your fiscal year that includes June 2024 in it. Lisa, we're hoping to have um the survey out in the next couple of weeks and then the report published um, by the new year, sometime in the new year. <laughs> so there's a lot of data cleaning that we do um, once we get the data and that takes us some time. So I would say just to manage expectations, probably end of January to end of February would be some time, would be a decent range where we may be able to have a report ready. Thank you, Tracy. We have some executive employees that live and work remote outside of our company location in Connecticut. How do we report those wages? Um, I think if they're employed by you and you are located in Connecticut, but they're remote, I think there's they would mm -hmm. be reported on um, in the survey. Yes. And I do believe that we have some questions on the percentage of your staff that is um, in-person, hybrid, or remote. Anything else that we haven't gotten to? Mm. Lots of fiscal year questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just got one over email that was just asking again if their fiscal year begins um, July 1st, what time frame should they provide the data for? Yeah, those and the one in the in the question and answer June to May, um, those are tricky. I would use the one that you think is going to best reflect um, your organization um, because they're right on those cusps. You'll either have completed data that will have ended in summer of 2024 or um, estimated data for the upcoming year. Um, I think I would use the last completed one. I would use the one that you finished um, in May or June. Are there any questions that we missed? Um. Um. There, someone's executive director is employed by a parent organization outside of Connecticut. Should they be reported on? Are they executive director of the Connecticut organization? If so, I would report on them in this um, wage and benefits survey. Yep, the dual leadership model. I think the that was in the Q and A. Um, trying to find the answer here. 
about co-CEOs. Um, do you add and divide, Tracy? Is that what the Q&A said? Um, for the weight, for reporting on the roles? Yes, you're yeah, going to add up everybody. If, for reporting on a role that's shared by two people. Is each person full-time in their role? If so, you would add them together and divide by two. So for example, if you are a large um, school or medical organization and you have a large facilities team, right? You have a lot of people who are in the role of custodial. Um, you're not gonna be reporting on one, you're gonna be adding up the wages of all of your custodians. Um, and divide them by the number um, that were added together to come up with an average wage for that particular role. Mm -hmm. So um, in the in the question here, if the two co-presidents are both full-time, you would add it up and divide, but if yes. not, then, yeah. Thank you. Um, and then if they have different demographics. <laughs> that's so that's that's the thing I, yeah. I I I would suggest that part of the understanding for this question is understanding diversity of leadership. Um, and so I would want to not lose any nuance that might be there in co-leadership roles. So, but I think that's a decision for your organization to decide um, which of those questions you will ask. You can always add a comment um, when appropriate to indicate that you have um, a co-leadership role, but we don't have a way to collect that data Um for multiple um, directors. Um, when will the survey be due? So I believe the survey will close on December 12th. That sounds about right, about two months. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tracy, did you, um, I just want to point you to Angela's question about different pay rates for the same role based on certifications and years of service. Um, so again, you'll want to take a close look at the description. Um, many of the descriptions include um, either certifications or years of service. Um, it might say, you know, for a description that this typically has, you know, five years of experience and a certification for this. So you'll wanna make sure that you read those descriptions um, and match up those roles. Um, if there is no specification on that, but they're in the same role and they have different pay rates, then I would add, they would just get added together in that collection of wages and then divided to come up with your average wage. Um, but I think for a lot of the positions, we've spent a lot of time adding sort of certifications and separating out those who are certified and those who are not, or those who are bilingual and those who are not, um, to be able to um, parse out those differences in wages based on some of those characteristics. Okay. Any other questions? If when you're doing the survey, these questions come up and you're unsure how you think that you should answer it, please reach out to us. We would rather help you 
get the data and the, the correct information um, on the front end rather than reaching out to you afterwards um, asking questions because the data doesn't really make sense. Um, so we would rather have you reach out to us for advice and help while taking the survey. Um, and um, don't hesitate to write to us as much as you need to. Not a bother. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. I really hope um, you'll be able to participate in the survey. I'm really excited about putting together another comprehensive report, report for everybody and hope it'll make the, a difference in how you make decisions in your organization. So again, like Tracy said, if you have questions, please reach out at any time. We'll follow up um, this session with um, links to the survey, to the worksheet, and an updated Q&A document for everybody. Um, so please keep your eyes out for that. Yeah, some folks had my earlier email go into their spam. So if you don't see something from me, uh, you don't receive an email from me in the next 24 hours with all this information, uh, go ahead and check your spam or your quarantine, um, wherever that ends up at your organization. Um, and just a reminder, I did send an email out at 12, 13 this afternoon um, that had a link to the survey instructions and the worksheet um, if you're still having trouble accessing that. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon.